we talked about inheritance. We said that <coughs> we said that to reuse our design, we use inheritance. We said inheritance is essentially when you create classes and that the classes good work they do a good job for you. Um, so you want to reuse them to create something. Uh, that's what inheritance is about. Inheritance in object orientation is modular in structured programming. Modular by reusing your C++ uses the entire functionality of an object. We said that the syntax of inheritance works as follows in our stage, which means to inherit something from something else. Uh, we have a class called animal. We want to create a cat out of it. With a column and a public, we are saying cat is an animal. And that means everything that the class has will come through. Uh, the access modifiers in the base class introduce a new access modifier called protected. We said protected property base derived class of that class. Only the children have access to it, and it's essentially private to everyone else. So protected are accessible to derived classes, but private to outsiders, public to children, private to outsiders. Creating a inheritance, we notice that every single method that is created in a derived class that has an identical signature an instance of a child, and you execute any methods that have identical in the in the child will in a cover. This class does not carry if the derived class does not implement the base class, which means, for example, the cat over here does not implement the move, then simply it backtracks to the parent and picks up the, parent, uh, uh, the action of the parent and executes that one. This is beautiful and nice. I point to a derived class by its own reference. Class with its own reference. Or pointing to a derived class using the Only sees the derived part, not the, own, the, the, the pointer only sees the base part, not the derived part. So the child is not visible. And because the child is dynamic in the pointer of a parent, you have only the parent pointer to delete it. Therefore, when you delete it, the compiler only sees the parent. A child using the parent's pointer. That's when we introduced virtuality. We said that virtuality is to tag a class, uh, uh, to tag a method inside a base class. And I cannot put enough stress on the word base here. So a virtual So, 
file. So, we said we can actually tag the methods that we want to get through. We, we reason that we have any business it is not supposed to change it should remain on move virtual but it becomes virtual sound because in guarantee or calling either the act or the sound Either the act is always the child is pointed by a parent, doesn't matter. It's always the child that will be called. If an, an if a, a, I don't know, an elephant is pointed by an animal, animal. So, so so that's what virtuality is. Then we came to a rule. Right. The make this the of the structure is called. Therefore, every you always leading the biggest so if I have a goldfish and the goldfish is a fish, the fish is an animal, goldfish is at or gone. Because of the fact that we have to always do two things. We don't ask that you in your workshop, sorry, in your Give it now at any moment you have to think about and then remember you don't have to have a class with resource you have for child in a any resources this is the absolute rule that you're gonna do any
let it be. It guarantees that. One of the Dynamic memory allocation happens and normal perfect. After creating all these beautiful virtuals and things like that, we talked about. Uh, the fact that sometimes when you are actually dealing with information inside the base class, you are 100% sure that this base class is supposed to be should have thus to a pure virtual function and a pure virtual function is a as is an, an a, a virtual function that is created and is set to zero which means it doesn't have any implementation you don't have any for it. so you Writing all the things that I know, I am designing it as much as I can, but as incomplete to be by next programmer. So this animal is complete. You cannot because it has an incomplete method. Soon as that incomplete method, the dog now can initiate the dog. Obviously, inside the dog, the animal will be. Of their child, in the belly of their class. That's the only so All these type of classes, because they are unreal classes, we call them abstract-based classes. Anybody knows what is that? Tell me what is abstract art. You know, what is <laughs> a triangle with That's why they put an abstract base class. So an abstract base class is a complete class. So if All design and 
And the interface has no meaning. We know in our technology when I Java has only an interface. So you can either make everything object oriented. Plus, that's not the case. So, we call these type of classes interfaces, and the interfaces look like something like this. So, an animal in this case, as you see, it has everything as pure. I still put Structure a defaulted, defaulted. Go with their in of and puts different things in it, and that happens all the time. When we look at our code, that's the reason they call it interface because they interface with different classes using the interface. So the interface that I have over here as an animal, uh, this is the. Yeah, not a good example. Let me bring the other one. So an, an, an interface that I have for, and now if you look at the class diagram over here, this is what we have. So I see I have an animal, and from an animal I inherited a pet. From pet I inherited a cat, a goldfish, a bird, and a, and a bodge. And bodge is a bird. So Baji is a bird that is a pet, is an animal, okay? And that becomes a, uh, the hierarchy that we have in this inheritance thing that you see. Now, if, you, if we look at uh, the code over here for the main, you will see that I simply create an animal pointer of three and I put a cat, a Baji, and a goldfish in it. Animal is an interface. It doesn't have anything but still can carry the addresses of its descendants, that is cat, bodgy, and goldfish. And when in a loop, I simply say act, move, and sound, automatically the proper things are going to be picked up out of it. Not only that, now in this case that you see over here, uh, the animal, as you see, doesn't have any implementation at all. When you look at the source files, there is no implementation for animal. Right? Because it doesn't have any functions. But when I look at here, I see that I have something like this. I have an animal interest. An operator for an animal, any type of animal, what is it? I'm going to come to my animal.cpp, and in there I'm saying it will act, move, and make a sound. So I do not need to implement that for any anymore. Up 
for selection one because it's being referred to by the interface. This is absolute polymorphism. The best example for what polymorphism is you have some whatsoever. And depending on really way therefore this one is real thing that just we had casting that is nothing it's just being casted it's just just the value of a variable then we had it said oh the name is So the names become different when you're calling it, literally. Okay? They were all the polymorphism over there. But when you come over here, it's actually the difference between the things. So the main over here now looks like something like this. All I need to do is to say, Go through the loop of those gold spiggly dingy whatever we had, and I'm gonna say print target of AP. Target of AP is an animal. It's gonna be inserted into C out. Not in C out. It's gonna get printed in a file. It's like double polymorphism in here. Right? So insert it to whatever you want, any type of O streams descend. And you can insert to that any descendant of animal. It will work perfectly. You don't need to worry about how things work. Everything, everything will be selected properly and correctly. And that's essentially the, the whole orientation. It's a, like what I talk about, I get goosebumps. Lifesaver when you're actually designing something. And done, supposed to be done to be done properly. This was impossible. For action based on what is doing. It was really train all the analysis and design course. Object oriented. When you get the system analysis and design, you get something. So it's essentially graph or how the system works. Then they say sounds of the thing becomes the actors. All the actions become the methods. And so you write the design, you take the names out, you take the actions out, and you see how it's going to end up taking shape as an object-oriented design. Then you're going to create the real. It works because it's based on the use that you have written. And it's a beautiful thing. You'll see it soon. So that's an object-oriented analysis and design. Uh, you, you've got to take this. Uh, I thought this is the second semester it starts. So it's in the third semester, right? It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, and at the end, I just put everything together in the, in the ninth one, so with constructors, destructors, everything in here. Oh, not bad. So play with that, run it, test it, uh, and see how it works. Uh, and yeah, so uh, this is essentially the top one with all the messages and everything. In it. Anyways, any questions about uh, uh, virtuality and all the good stuff? something the action everything will be updated automatically if you
but I still gave you the mark, you fat boy. Okay? Any other It's up object. And in mind, that's that.